Dr. J, guess what it is? It's Tuesday. And what do we have on Tuesday? It's Nutrition Tips Tuesday with the guru, uh, Jamie Hayes. Now, over the last, what, nearly five weeks, we've been actually been talking about all sorts of things, health and also immunity and how to eat, what not to eat. And I must say, it's been a wonderful way of starting the week for me. And just, I just put myself in a little bubble now. Um, sure, we hear this stuff uh, every now and then, but we don't go into a deep dive. And I'm just absolutely blessed to have Jamie uh, giving up some of his time to help us with not just helping us with weight loss or whatever, but actually having a, a process which will increase our, let's say, our happiness. Because we only got one thing that's going to get, keep us happy, really, it's going to be our health. We lose our health, uh, we're going to have a big problem. And uh, you can have the best job in the world, but if you're sick, you can't look after your kids or your family, uh, we have a problem. So um, with no further ado, let's uh, introduce Jamie to take us through a wonderful journey uh, for this morning. Thanks for joining us, Jamie. Hey, Steve, and good morning to you and good morning to everybody or people who are watching afterwards. And you know, the Dalai Lama, when you mention uh, what you just mentioned, uh, where a lot of countries measure uh, their performance by gross domestic product, he measures it by happiness. How happy are his people? So well said. Well, look, it's, uh, I've seen so many very, very successful people when they've got sick, and it's usually because of, you know, uh, as it's been written, as you, as you say regularly, a lot of the health related uh, challenges we have is based on our diet. And um, that's all uh, something that we can, can change. And, stay healthy we can do all the great things that we want to in life so um this is actually incredibly valuable i know we do sales and communications training but if we're not well and healthy we can't do the things that we love to do and you know well, what do we do sales for so we have freedom to have choices in life so um, i think it's invaluable so what are we going to cover today mate i've absolutely got my my trusty pen out and, okay well i i look i actually created an eight point plan for everybody I sent this to you by Zoom, a PowerPoint, but I could share my screen if you like. Yeah, that'd be terrific. That'd be but great. Let's, let's try that. And uh, let's see, where do I do? Share screen. Down the bottom there. And share PowerPoint. How yeah. about that? And then you do share. I am ducking and weaving here and then go slideshow from start. Now, you know, if, if everybody, I'm happy to send this, of course, you know, I'll send this. Well, I have already sent this to you, Steve. But if they could just on a sheet of paper, draw out a circle and then divide it in half, divide it horizontally, and then put those diagonal lines. So you end up with sort of like eight little triangles. So how are your drawing skills? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> We're gonna get going. And I want you to assume that your body is sort of like a pond and this is one big pond and so if you drop a stone in one of those little triangles does that ripple into the other triangle so let's say you've got a pond and you go to the bottom of the pond and you drop a stone in will that ripple go through to the other areas of the pond i would say so well, yes, of course the answer is yes. It's not a trick question. Or you go to the opposite side of the pond and you, you drop a stone in. Will that ripple through to the other side of the pond? Mm. And the answer is yes. Um, my father, who was a doctor, said, unfortunately, medicine has become full of reductionists or reductionism, where you've got a siloed approach. Not only you've got an orthopedic surgeon, you've got people who specialize in hands or feet or thumbs. You know, they're so reductionist and they just look at that little tiny thing rather than treating the whole person, the whole body. Uh, but we've got a responsibility to ourselves to treat the whole body. So, um, so I would ju I've just got this as a way of, of simply looking at uh, your whole body and we could use this as a plan. But what I want you to think about is how it's bi-directional, which means one thing affects the other thing. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to release the whole lot all at once. I know that's probably bad karma, but let's start at number one, which is lose body fat. And particularly, you know, now we've got all this uh, effort and cost on preventing infection from uh, COVID-19, 
but there is hardly any concentration on maximizing your body's defense and minimizing your body's inflammation and one of the the best things you can do if you believe in putting a seat belt on when you when you hop in a car which is a defensive strategy then take ac actions proven actions to reduce body fat because it's so inflammatory and uh, and there, there are studies after studies from Wuhan to America to Europe saying those people with extra body fat are more likely to end up in hospital. They're more likely to have greater severity of, of their problems and more likely to end up on ventilators. And this has got nothing to do about me fat shaming or being a fattest or anything like that. You know, the statistics are just abundantly clear that those people carrying more body fat uh, are just more likely to fare worse you know, if they do catch the virus. And possibly we're all going to catch it at some stage. You know, many of us might have had it without even knowing about it. And so things like um, exercising in a fasted state, you know, when you wake up in the morning, go for a walk, uh, have a workout. You don't have to have breakfast before doing that. Um, Definitely, we've discussed in previous um, episodes how a low-carb or ketogenic eating plan is more effective for losing body fat than simply using calories in, calories out. It's just just... Can I come back to that first state you just said? If we're going to um, exercise, if you do it in the morning in, an, in a fasting state, um, that allows us to burn off more of the excess fuel that we're storing. Is that right? Absolutely, because you know, your body, you think of your body as a fire, you've got the kindling, which is like blood glucose and glycogen in the muscles, and you've got the logs, which is body fat. Now, if we top up the kindling before we go exercising, more glucose, let's say have a banana and fruit and things like that, then it's less likely we're going to get to the, the log, the stored body fat. That's a big rock, Jamie, because a lot of people like to say, oh, look, I'm going to get up there, I'm going to have my breakfast, and I'm going to go and have a workout. Uh, this is great because they get up in the morning and do their run or walk and, um, uh, or maybe some weights, uh, and then they can um, and then get on with topping things up accordingly. That's great. Yeah. And did you know, Steve, that most uh, large health clubs have a switch when you walk in the door and that switch determines whether you're going to burn any body fat during your workout or not. <laughs> and so you walk in the door at the reception of your health club or leisure center, and if you go to the fridge and get a Gatorade, <laughs> that is going to guarantee that you are just going to be using kindling, not body fat. Wow. That's great. So we don't go and get a, an orange juice before we get going. No, uh, or, definitely not. Or a Gatorade. We just have a glass of water if need be and then go for gold. Absolutely. Take your water bottle with you. Absolutely. That's absolutely the way to go. So remember, there's a switch at the, the front door of many fitness clubs. It's called that fridge. Okay, great. Thank and you. And we definitely don't need it. So um, let's go to number two. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Remember, with one of the strategies with reducing body fat is to prioritize protein, eat slowly, you know, things like that. And we've, so go back to the previous episodes. We spent a lot of time on that. And number two is to change your diet, you know, and, and definitely what we want to do is change your diet to gives us good blood sugar regulation. So our blood sugar is even like that throughout the day. What we don't want is spikes like this. We don't want spikes, you know, where we're going to spike our blood sugar. So by having the carbohydrates very, very low, prioritizing protein, we tend to have much more even blood sugar. And so we're not spiking it. So uh, because that spiked blood sugar uh, or poor blood sugar regulation, again, is associated with reduced defense. You know, you know, should you unfortunately come up with any virus or or the flu or anything like that, you know, I, I've been vaccinated for the flu, but there's no guarantee I'm not going to, it's going to stop me getting the flu. It, it'll reduce my chances. Just like, um, of course, Again, getting back to that, that, that analogy of the car. Your car, Steve, has a crumple zone at the front so that if you hit something, it sort of crumples. It's also got airbags. 
so that if you hit something hard, that airbag is going to explode. You are also wearing a seat belt. Now, do any of those three things stop you having an accident? No, not at all. No, they don't. So, of course, we want to uh, prevent, you know, uh, try and stay away from viruses and stuff like that. But it's not, despite all our best efforts, it's, it, it, you know, th these are just going to, they're, they're one part of the story. The other part of the story is to have your crumple zone, have your airbag, you know, have your seat belts on, because these are the defensive strategies. So we've got to do both. Yeah, plan, plan for the, hope for the best and plan for the worst. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so and we know that, again, spiked blood sugar, um, you know, poor blood sugar regulation, uh, you know, increases our, um, uh, the uh, likelihood of us being infected, poor response, you know, disease severity, and even death, unfortunately. Uh, so we want, and, and the key there, is to cut out the processed foods. Now, processed foods tend to have a toxic combination of both highly available carbohydrate and fat. And often, the, you know, the highly processed carbohydrate is combined with uh, unhealthy fats, which is the highly processed polyunsaturated seed oils and things like that, very inflammatory. So think, um, let's say, a donut. A donut is high sugar and it's fried. I mean, that, that is such a toxic mix. And just yesterday I read um, on the BBC online that uh, Dunkin' Donuts donated something like 15,000 donuts at, as a special treat to healthcare workers. <laughs> now, now these, guys, these guys are the vectors of spreading disease. You know, they have an incredible virus load. The last thing they would want to do is to have a donut or can you stop at one if you've got them all there and they're free? No, you know, because they have a dopamine, dopamine effect and you can't stop at one. So it, it was the, the worst thing to be giving a healthcare worker. Of course, we want to say thank you to them, but it was absolutely you know, adding to their danger load. So absolutely stupid, just stupid, you know, and, and it, it's sort of commercial interests sort of going crazy. Now, uh, when we cut out the processed foods, we're going to get to sleep and, um, and you know, technology is, is really making a play here. Um, anybody can go, you know, when it comes to um, changing their diet, they can go to a chemist, they can get a blood sugar meter for $20, $25, and they can monitor their blood sugars, their body's blood sugar response to, to meals. And if you, if, you, if you go to your doctor and, and you lie and, and get your doctor you know, to lie to say that you're a diabetic, you can get what's called CGM or a patch that goes on your arm called CGM stands for Continuous uh, Glucose Monitoring. So that it monitors you sort of 24 hours a day. So you can actually see on a graph your body's response to different foods and if, it, if your blood sugar is being spiked. Because remember we've said in the past, Steve, one diet does not suit everybody, you know, that we all have different responses to different foods. Yeah, we said uh, test and measure and so forth. And to get rid of that toxic processed food type scenario, I think uh, you said in another episode that uh, one of the good things to do is just buy things without labels on it because that'll actually reduce that probability. Definitely, definitely. Right. Now, um, unfortunately, you can, buy, <laughs> you can buy food by just having it delivered, so you don't even need to get out of your armchair. <laughs> I remember my old mate Gary Egger saying, you know, the husband uh, calling his wife, saying, what's, what's for dinner, Dale? And the husband was sitting in the lounge chair and the wife was in the kitchen. <laughs> so uh, so that, that leads into uh, point number three, which is exercise, because one of the best things you can do for your immune function is to have a, a good diet of exercise, you know, uh, and uh, because we know that it helps your immune function, it boosts sleep. Remember that ripple pond? So this is bi-directional. Sleep is important, but exercise helps our sleep. Also, getting getting some exercise outdoors in the sunshine to help boost vitamin D. We spoke about that before. That, that helps as well. Uh, and remember, particularly if you're doing resistance training exercise, because that builds 
uh, your glucose sinks your muscles. And you know from, because you're a weight training expert, you probably want to do a pushing exercise. So pushing, pulling with upper body, pushing, pulling, upper body, and with lower body, pushing. I mean, that was five exercises. You know, 15, 20 minutes in the, in the gym twice a week can be absolutely life-changing. Absolutely life-changing. I've seen actually you doing uh, certain things at home uh, for around about the same period of time. I know you do a lot of swimming as well, but uh, uh, you do your chin-ups and your squats and so forth uh, just because you haven't been able to go to the gym. So having that push-pull component, uh, we're using body weight a little bit more slowly, um, it, it does the trick as well. It really does. It really does. But you, you know, I, I think it's good if you can if you can find a personal trainer or a buddy or whatever like that to hold you accountable. Absolutely, accountability uh, is the key there. <laughs> it really is because uh, most people, you know, they stop at ten. They they don't they don't get to the point of of stimulus. You know. Yes, the forced repetition is the is the key. You get, your, your ten is to get you to the eleventh and twelfth and forced rep, or whatever. That's right. Yeah. So uh, and as we know, muscles can't count reps. You know, they all they understand is. Uh, whether you ask them the big question, did you get to a point where they're saying, can you do one more rep, you know? So how many times a week do you would recommend if we get up in the morning and do our fast state, a little bit of exercise, um, we reduce those toxins um, with those processed foods by just getting things without labels and um, that exercise for 10 to 15 or 20 minutes, you say exercise daily or you would say twice a week to start with would be okay. Uh, once a week is better than none. Um, what would you say would to someone that hasn't done any for a while, uh, what they, should they start with once or twice a week for 15, 20 yeah, minutes? Yeah, look, I, I think, um, once a week is better than none. Twice a week definitely works better. Personally, I find it easier to have a habit of just doing it every day. Right. So like now, abstinence, abstinence is uh, better than just uh, having moderation where you then say, let's just do something every day. Yeah, absolutely. Make, so I just... Take a routine. Uh, and this morning, because uh, I'd sort of let myself go and I was trying to rebuild up to my PB and chin-ups which is 13, and I've been struggling to get to 10, but and then 11. But this morning I hit 12. Now the the 12th one was ugly. Okay, it wasn't very good, and I have posted these on YouTube. And some of my friends from Australia and overseas have really correctly criticised my form and stuff like that. That was when they said uh, you, you used your chin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it wasn't I, that bad, Jamie. Les, Back the Leslie you. Gray said. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, anyway. She I said, do the wiggle oh, and the chin, my friend. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but look, you know, in the words of the great Bulgarian weightlifting coaches, he said, I don't care how you get it up, as long as you get it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep doing those pull-ups. <laughs> uh, but, um, but also exercise, particularly strength exercise, can, can, because they are your blood sugar sinks, they help balance your blood sugar. So absolutely crucial, you know, uh, because as we've said before, so many people, probably at least 50% of Australian adults, have undiagnosed uh, uh, insulin resistance, you know, and, uh, and so it starts in the muscles, you know, so, so uh, it's really important to turn and strengthen those muscles, keep them strong. Absolutely. We just now, did those three, just those three in that eight steps you'd have, have uh, all those, uh, you'd have a significant change. That's great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and these have a, the ripple effect, you know, it's bi-directional, you know, one affects the other. Uh, so the, the other, in point four, is the, the feeding fasting patterns. Remember, uh, try to increase your non-eating window. So whatever time you finish dinner at night, let's say you finish dinner at seven, uh, and if you eat breakfast or your first meal of the day at seven, that's a 12-hour eating window. Anything you can do to increase that eating window is going to make it easier for you to burn body fat and reduce inflammation. So if we have dinner a bit earlier and, um, and then maybe breakfast a bit later, that's better. Absolutely. Or you could even think, I'm just going to be a daytime eater. So I'm going no, to eat when no, the sun's no up. And no dinner and just have something in the morning if need be. Absolutely. And, you know, as we said, um, Ellen, she, her, her first meal of the day is uh, at 12 o'clock. Mm. So there is no golden rule that we need to eat three times a day. 
So meal timing, particularly the eat, increasing your non-eating window, is an effective strategy to help in reducing body fat. Right. Okay. Now, uh, then we move straight on to sleep. You know, so sleep hygiene and habits, and getting into a ritual of going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time. Uh, you know, I think is a really powerful thing to do. You know, having a jet black bedroom, um, sleeping comfortably cool is important. Uh, not having screens in your bedroom. You know, the very first thing we did when we moved into this apartment, because they left the TV up on the bedroom wall, I just took it down. You know, we did not want a TV in the bedroom. And uh, because it's, you've got that blue light on your eyes and it's going to interrupt your sleep. So I'll just, just interrupt you there for a moment. With, with your sleep, um, because I'm quite interested in this area. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's better to have a set time that you go to sleep and get up and have a routine in your sleep as well as your, your, your working day? Like, for instance, we go to bed at 11 and you get up at, at 7 or whatever it may be, and that should be a routine. And, um, and then you just keep to that routine. I think that I think the consistency is the key. So I think you're dead right. You know that. And so personally, because I, you know, as a matter of fact, I work backwards. So whenever you naturally wake up, count back eight hours and make sure you're in bed by then. So if you naturally wake up at eight, then you count back. That's twelve. But if you nat like for me, I naturally wake up at four a.m. So if I if I'm, if I'm not in bed by eight, I'm screwed. Now, from time to time, out with friends and what like that, do I sometimes stay up till 10? Yes, but I don't particularly like it, you know, because I really enjoy my mornings. You know, it's my time, you know, reading, education, exercise, uh, uninterrupted time, fantastic. You do and that on the weekend as well, Jamie? Do you, does that I does do. maintain the status quo seven days? I do, actually, because, you know... Um, it, uh, it just, my body sort of guides me and it, you know, it, it seems to work for me. Yeah. Terrific. So um, just while we get on to number five, uh, Micheline, have you got any questions so far? Any questions? I'll unmute you. There you go. If you're there. Yeah. No, um, all the questions you're asking, Steve, are exactly what I was about to ask. So okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good. Thank you very much. All right, we'll let the guru continue. Yeah, so that, that proves that Steve is absolutely a mind reader. <laughs> I've often thought that. <laughs> but, but, and sleep affects blood sugar regulation. It makes vaccines more effective. Um, uh, and uh, here's another little tip. One of the most important things in getting good night's sleep is breathing properly. And uh, some people find that if they go to a chemist and they get mouth tape, which they put across their mouth, that once they get used to it, they get much more restful and better quality sleep, more restorative sleep. So it's a good thing to try, you know, mouth tape. And Google it, you know, YouTube and stuff like that, mouth tape and sleep quality. Is that, going, just, is that because it stops the mouth opening and you get into the, uh, the, the snoring type scenario, which creates sleep apnea? Absolutely. You know, and, and of course, thank you for mentioning snoring because um, when we've got excess weight, body fat, this is, this is the opposite. So that ripple effect, when body fat goes up, we get weight, extra body, you know, body fat in the tongue, tends to go to snoring, sleep apnea, risky, uh, uh, and, and not only that, it's sort of like a virus because we, we, we're all focused on uh, avoiding being infected, but we should also think about infecting others. That's the benefit of wearing a mask, is that if you're snoring, your part, if, you, if you have a partner that sleeps with you, it's likely you're going to be interrupting their sleep. Oh, yes, it would be, yes. And yeah. they're not going to be sleeping as well. And if they're struggling to lose weight, see the ripple effect? Mm. You know, one thing affects the other. So, right. yeah. So uh, we've got to watch out for that. So mouth taping and blue light explosion. And, and sometimes people wear, you know, a blue blocker goggles at night, you know, sort of glasses at night. And uh, as a matter of fact, our next door neighbour, we met, they're sort of doing a renovation. And they've got lights, the whole house, are these new fancy lights that simulate day daylight 
during the day, like at 12 o'clock, and then as the sun goes down, those lights change colour automatically to reduce the blue light so they get better... Because he's a pilot and he suffers insomnia, so he wants to get a better night's sleep. Wow. So they're using technology to mirror the, you know, the natural change in light intensity of the sun. Gee, so, it, yeah, it really is, yeah. So let's, let's move on to number six, uh, which is having a daily temperature challenge. My dear father, Ross, even as a doctor, he w I remember one of his habits. He would finish his morning shower with a cold shower, with a cold challenge. Uh, and, uh, and, and so th th this can absolutely um, uh, you know, have an effect on particularly BAT, B-A-T, brown adipose tissue. You, you know, we, um, when we've got kids, young kids, and uh, you know, they're running around, they throw their clothes off and it's cold, and we say, Johnny, put your jumper on, you'll catch, you know, you'll catch a cold, stuff like that. But they've got so much active BAT, brown adipose tissue, that um, they don't feel the cold, you know, and, and, and they kick their blankets off and things like that. We think they will catch the cold, but they don't. But as we get older, this BAT, brown adipose tissue, is, um, is less active, but we can re-stimulate it by temperature challenges, either cold temperature challenges. Um, as a matter of fact, they are about to reopen the pool here in my apartment building because I'm going to challenge myself to see how much throughout the year can I tolerate the cold. Now, is that um, healthy for the heart and so forth with the uh, southern change? I know, I know the Bondi ice burgers go there all year round and some people, uh, 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 there's a, a very, very famous, I forget his name now, a fella that actually can uh, regulate his whole uh, a, a, a body. Wim Hof. Uh, that's it. That's it. And, uh, and he uh, kills viruses and all sorts of stuff with actually going through the, the, the uh, change of temperature in his body uh, and going to incredibly cold uh, areas. And it has no detrimental effect with, on him whatsoever. He actually says it actually is really good for him. Yeah. Look, uh, I actually don't know the answer to your question, Steve. I, as I've said before, I don't have the answers to all questions. But um, I'm not convinced that going from a hot sauna to a cold plunge uh, is a good idea if you have uh, any heart condition. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> so I wouldn't suggest it, you know. Um, and I remember at Bondi, at our fitness club there, that you used to manage yourself, I, I remember the, sa the sauna uh, broke down and we had to have the guy from Viking Sauna come and he was from Sweden and he called it sauna. And he said to me, he said, Jamie, do you know why we are less prone to sickness and virus and things like that? Because we've got millions of sauna and everybody has a sauna, you know, sauna, sauna, um, uh, for that hot uh, temperature challenge. You know, and so they'll get in there and sweat it out and stuff like that. Because he, because he said heat kills viruses. Yeah, well, it does, doesn't it? And so if you went for hot and then had a... Um uh, in a shower and then just turn it on for cold for a little bit. That's uh, doing it in a more, let's say, um, passive way to just uh, start getting the BAT up. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, even if it makes a small difference, it's a ripple in the pond. Yes. Ripple in the pond. Great. And uh, okay, next, let's move to number seven, stress management. Because Steve, I know that you know that your physical state, you know, if, if you're stressed, you start breathing as though you're stressed. You hold yourself as, as though you're stressed. So can you do the reverse? Uh, can you change your physiology to mm. say, I'm going to breathe as though I'm not stressed? And does that reduce our stress? Because we know uh, that stress impacts uh, our blood sugar regulation, you know, our insulin regulation, which impacts our body fat again, the ripple in the pond, you know. So... What can we do to reduce, not so much this, I mean, if we can't take the stresses out of our lives, how, what can we do to change our body's response to the stress? You know, and sometimes meditation, breath work, learning to breathe as if you're not stressed and you're full of body and suddenly that stress response goes away, even though you've still got whatever's causing you stress. And like <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> was I stressed? I broke my 
iPhone 11, you know. Oh, no way. <laughs> <It is> cactus. <laughs> That's not a good thing. I <laughs> rely on those bloody things all the time. <laughs> so did I feel some stress? Yes, I did. So don't, don't try and call me right now because <laughs> I, can, I can see it ringing, but <laughs> I cannot answer it, which is good. Uh, anyway, so by having a less stress response help, helps manage your immune function. Okay? Yes. And then finally, that moves us to point number eight, which is having both accountability and com community. You know, if you want to make any change in your life, increasing sales, decreasing body fat, improving your health, having somebody to hold you accountable every week, like you hold your team accountable every week, makes a significant difference. I mean, we are returning kids to school because those teachers... I mean, there's plenty of information, there's plenty of school books, but it was the teachers that held people accountable. Yes. You know, and that's the learning process. And, you know, you, you're always preaching. It's not just listening, but doing and, uh, and you know, that role playing, fun playing and stuff like that. And the community of surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Absolutely. People who are interested in achieving what you're interested in achieving makes a significant difference. And you do it just incredibly well with uh, with Diet Flex. I mean, um, with uh, the the program you've run for many years now, you, know, you create a community, and they have their coach that keeps them accountable every week, and just uh, goes through and make sure that they are, uh, you know, get a, a let's say a celebration, any challenges and any roadblocks, and they give them the solutions as well. And they they don't want to let the coach down, but they also coach doesn't want them to uh, let themselves down. And I, it's the same in sales. Um, we're now getting a culture in the sack now that people are now really starting to enjoy their accountability, not just with me, but with other people now. So it's starting to grow within the community because we're all tribal in nature and um, interesting, uh, interesting birds of a feather flock together. You know, we all celebrate wins and help each other when we're down. So I think oh, yeah. uh, that accountability community is, is critical. And if I could just share a belief I have with you on that, I believe with deep conviction that, any person who improves or masters the sales process will increase their earning capacity in any industry, in any profession for the rest of their lives. So, Steve, what you give people is a gift. Well, that's a nice way of putting it. And, uh, it's, uh, I like to have a situation where it says, well, if you become good at this, you'll give you freedom to make choices. And we all like to have those freedom, don't we? <laughs> it really does. You know, so... You're absolutely giving people a gift. And, uh, you know, one of the best things, you know, business operators can do is to make sure that they have an effective sales process, you know, with effective salespeople. And, uh, and that really does require an investment. You know, what they say that the only thing worse than training people and having them leave is not training them and having them stay. <laughs> it's a, that's a classic. And it's a beauty. It's a, it'll stay forever. I can assure you. <laughs> Oh, dear me. Now, Michelin, um, I'm sure you've got a few questions for Jamie. Uh, um, I'll unmute you and you can ask him a couple of questions. You always have great questions. <laughs> um, Jamie, I'm, I'm finding with the intermittent fasting, um, I, I started about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you started and, eating at one o'clock? Yeah, in the yep. afternoon. Um, I just, uh, and it naturally happens. Um, and I sort of, I stay up till late. Um, am I cancelling out the ripples when I'm sleeping a bit, you know, I'm sleeping later. That's um, fine. And, and, but, but I get hungry later. Okay. So that's a clue, isn't it? Yeah. So, can I get when, you, when you say. Can I get you unscare your screen now so they, people can see you talking? That'd be terrific. I'm, I'm not able to do that no. at the moment. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, but so, Michelin, when you said you get hungry later, when, what, what time are you referring it to? Well, if I'm staying up till 12 midnight, which, um, and, and I stay beyond, and now a big fat penny has just dropped with blood sugar for me, um, I get hungry. And so, and very hungry for carbohydrates at that time. Mm -hmm. What are your tips on, um, I think I know what your tip is, but I'd love to hear it again. What do you think it would be? What, what do you think I would suggest to you? You would suggest that um, one is to um, not take any carbs. 
um, to to maybe change the sleep time and um, you know stop eating maybe around nine o'clock and um, eat in that window between one and nine. Definitely, I would definitely leave a space between when you naturally go to bed and uh, and your last meal. Uh, if you can have a space there, and just one other tip is that um, I think some people actually uh, their their appetite is stimulated because they're dehydrated. So this is something to look out for. Oh, okay. Uh, and you might have you know like a herbal tea after dinner. Um, you know non-stimulant, you know, non-caffeine, you know, we like that sort of ginger tea, but there's other teas and things like that. And sometimes that can, you know, and there is a little bit of sweetness in some of those ginger teas and things like that. Uh, and just, uh, and there are sleepy time teas and things like that. So sometimes just a tea to boost your hydration, you know, whether the herbs in the tea make any difference, I don't know. But just to make sure you're not dehydrated, because uh, I do believe that uh, dehydration can be an appetite trigger. Okay, I think that's a real, really important point for me, mm. especially in winter. Um, drinking less, as much as I know I need to, I find I'm drinking less. Yeah, look, I, I think it's natural for all of us. Uh, I be believe that thirst, you know, regulation uh, or in hydration regulation uh, becomes you know, sort of less active as we get older. And uh, so, and I think I said in a previous episode, when, you know, older people check into a nursing home that, or a hospital, the first thing the nurse does is grab their skin and see, you know, say, oh, hello, love. And they just grab their skin and pinch it to see how quickly it recovers. And that's just a, a, a quick sign, a nurse's sort of uh, sign to see, is this person dehydrated? Do we need to put them on a drip? Because their thirst uh, mechanism, they just don't feel thirsty, you know, so that they become dehydrated, which is a risk and slows the metabolism and all sorts of stuff. So uh, whether that's the, the whole answer for you, but it, it's definitely something I would try. Um, hopefully you are keeping a log of what you're eating, when you're eat, eating and how you feel. I am getting better at it, I have to say. No, 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 no. You either do it or you don't do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got yeah, it. remember in Star Wars, yes. Yoda says to Luke Scott, you know, he says, uh, you know, don't try, do, you know. <laughs> do or don't do, there's no, there's no try. <laughs> and and what, one other question, Jamie. Do you find, um, like, I find when I'm trying to multitask, like when I'm trying to learn, something new and do something new is it um in 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 your mind um is it possible for me to be in a state where i'm doing something for my body and something for my spirit and something for my finances like how does that work uh well i i don't know if i'm a big believer in multitasking except that you can of course listen while you walk or you know, gee, I, I iron shirts and, you know, listen, you know, so I do a bit of multitasking myself. Um, you, you know, you'll just have to figure out what works for you. Uh, yes. But I wouldn't try and overload uh, your mind. Uh, as a matter of fact, here is a lovely saying for you, and I believe it's accredited to a, a, uh, an American Indian who said, sometimes ours sits and thinks... And sometimes ours just sits, <laughs> not thinking at all. Yeah, yeah. My friend Victor Brick, uh, I think, taught me that. Terrific. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it is uh, what well, because as you go through training and learning new things, I find my mind goes into one direction, and then um, where I lose out is definitely in the weight loss area. I can do it for five, six, ten days, and then back regress and fall back and that's a big problem no 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 change your language do you know yeah. that people who are smokers who want to quit smoking forever the more times they try to quit smoking and fail 
the closer they get to quitting smoking forever. So it's a, a bunch of learning lessons. You just got to learn each time along the way. Yeah. Every time you fall off the wagon, as long as you're monitoring and self-monitoring and, you know, saying, oh, there is a lesson. I had those cookies in the, in the house or in my car. I shouldn't have had them there. You know, I fell back on that. I've got to manage my environment. So there's always lessons. So every little setback will bring you closer to where you want to be. Terrific. Well, Thank Jamie, you. You better it's unshare your screen, screen, Jamie. Sorry? You better unshare your screen for a moment. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Um, let's see. Let's Just figure out how I do oh. that. New share, stop share. Thank you. Here we go. Back. Here you go. Terrific. Um, one thing that uh, I found that um, I think, uh, it's a very interesting question that uh, Micheline had. Um, focus creates genius. And uh, there was a, a little exercise that was... Um, I saw a little while ago where there were two conversations going at once and they were saying, right, we want you to listen to the conversations and I want you to, then we'll ask you some questions. And then there was these two conversations going. And then they said, well, what, what color was the car and what color was the, and what were they doing? And guess what? You couldn't answer the question of the, where you're trying to multitask and listen to two things at once. Mm. And it just proves the point that this, this thing of women can multitask better um, with the multifaceting processes is a fallacy. Uh, where it comes down to focus, if you focus, if you had an, uh, uh, somebody um, operating on you, sure, they've got to be aware of the stuff around them, but you want to have full focus. If you're learning sales, well, if you've got a process to learn, you've got to be doing, uh, you've got to do it, uh, uh, six plus three plus one, and then do your practice, create the neural pathway, then go to the next thing. Now, for instance, with diet flex, for instance, and your keto fitness, you, you profess, you have a coach. So if you had a coach that was coaching you in sales, well, you could do your training with your sales. And then you had to say, ah, oh, now I've got to do my coaching with my my food, I'll just talk to that coach. So all of a sudden, if you're playing basketball and netball and swimming, it doesn't mean that you have to do basketball and swimming uh, at the same time. You yeah. just have times that you do basketball and swimming, diet, diet flex and nutrition, sack training. You just pick the times to actually then hold yourself accountable. But the key is the accountability. So um, I believe you can multitask if you have your spiritual stuff then focus on that and hold yourself accountable um, and then you have your food and then you hold yourself accountable it, it doesn't mean you do a, a book for four to five days and stop you don't do a book all day it only takes you three minutes um, and then you then have a chat with your coach so uh, that's my thoughts on it anyway Jamie I don't know what you think yeah definitely yeah and a lot of your clients are coaches or they're selling coaching they're selling personal training they're selling you know, memberships programs were like that. But I wonder, you know, and they're getting people to pay for that coaching, but I wonder how many of those are investing in coaching for themselves in different areas of their lives that they want to improve. Yeah, it's a good point. And, um, you know, I'm a big advocate of learning all the time, as are you. And, you know, you do webinars and you have training as well that you go to and have someone help you. Uh, I don't think you can ever do it alone, mate. And um, that's no. why if it's with your nutrition, you've got to get someone to help you with nutrition. If you've got your, your, your accounting, we'll get someone to help you with the accounting. I'm a true believer, finding an expert. Sure. Now, and I've, I've told you, Steve, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dietitian. You know, uh, we've just figured out a lot of things that work and they're sharing those things. That's right. And uh, you get the, those experts to help you get the best of the best. So uh, absolutely fantastic as usual, Jamie. So uh, Michelin, have you got any, uh, one more question for Jamie or you're done and dusted? Um, okay. Now, now, because you went through this um, set point uh, to follow, I'm going to follow that order and make sure I tick those boxes. Um, and yes, uh, go straight into setting times for when I'm going to focus on my body. Well done. Fantastic. And you just keep a record of everything that goes into yep. your mouth and when it goes in. All right, mate. Okay, Steve Thanks, and Michelin, Steve. thank you so much. And uh, uh, all the best to uh, you and all your watchers and followers and whatever. Terrific. Thanks, mate. And uh, I can't thank you enough. And uh, I just love that eight-step stuff. I've got uh, lots of scribbling notes here and I'll be putting them in the practice too. <laughs> Great. All right, thanks. Have okay. a good day, guys.
the guru comes on on Tuesdays and helps us out. It's only going to be happening for while Corona is around. So I'll get the opportunity while you can. It's great to have Micheline here today, but there's a whole lot of other people out there that could probably ask Jamie some questions that are maybe being not answered today. So join us at nine o'clock on a Tuesday uh, while Jamie has the time available. Remember, he's the CEO of three companies and he is very generously helping us uh, get you healthy and well. So take some notes, take some massive action. And again, thanks to Jamie. Dr. J, signing off. Bye for now.